Our lesson centers around Paul's rebuke of Peter and holds profound implications for modern Christians. Now, this is a dispute, so we have to remember that Galatians was written by the Apostle Paul, who had a unique perspective on the gospel and his apostleship. At this time, there was a controversy brewing within the early Christian community. False teachers known as Judaizers had infiltrated the Galatian church. They preached a distorted gospel, insisting that Gentile Christians must undergo circumcision and adhere to the Jewish law. These Judaizers challenged Paul's apostleship, claiming that he was preaching a man-made gospel to please humans. In response, Paul defended his apostleship, emphasizing its divine origin and explaining that his message came directly from Christ through revelation. Paul's independence as an apostle is a reoccurring theme in the book of Galatians. He had minimal contact with the Jerusalem apostles and sought neither their approval or their gospel. But during his visit to Jerusalem, Paul met with three apostles, Peter, James, and John. Our scripture describes a pivotal incident in which Paul publicly confronts Peter. Peter had initially lived like a Gentile when he was in Antioch, associating freely with Gentile Christians and eating non-kosher, non-Jewish food in violation of the law of Moses. However, when a party of Jews arrived from, quote, James, end quote, Peter began to withdraw from the Gentiles, particularly doing meals. Now, this change in Peter's behavior escalated, causing a division within the church in Antioch. Recognizing the seriousness of this potential schism, Paul confronts Peter publicly. Paul asserts that Peter's actions, along with those who followed him, were wrong. In this confrontation, Paul was not shy about giving his opinion. One, Peter and the others acted out of fear of the circumcision advocates, seeking to please men by bowing to societal pressures. Two, Paul pointed out that Peter's own hypocrisy in that he was compelling the Gentiles to live like Jews when he himself had lived like a Gentile. Three, the hypocrisy and backpedaling that he had done, Peter, influenced other Jewish Christians, including Barnabas, to change their opinion. Four, Peter's actions compelled Gentile believers to live like Jews, contradicting the gospel message of salvation that Jesus Christ had given us. Christianity is the largest faith in the world, largely because of its diversity. Paul's argument here makes that possible. Paul refutes the idea, the common idea, that Jews were inherently superior to Gentiles, emphasizing that both Jews and Gentiles are justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. Paul's point number six explains that In Christ, believers are released from the law's condemnation. It is through faith that they die to the law and live for Christ. He emphasizes that it is futile to return to the law in order to keep righteousness. This lesson still speaks to Christians today. Think about it. Peter's actions were inconsistent with his belief, highlighting the danger of our actions inferring the wrong path for others. We must make sure that our actions align with our beliefs and with biblical principles. Next, even strong believers, like those who sit in corner pews and Those who stand in pulpits, strong believers like Peter and James, can be tested in their conviction. This incident helped to make them stronger as they stood before 
the Jerusalem Council. Public errors may require public correction in order to prevent harm to the body of believers. We should be prepared to address issues publicly or have our issues addressed publicly as long as we are following biblical principles. This passage reminds us that even great figures in faith like Peter are fallible. We should approach our faith with humility, acknowledging the potential of our errors. Despite the conflict here, though, this incident led to a deeper understanding of the gospel and unity among believers. Serious problems can often result in a deeper and stronger organization. In doing that, in working through our differences, we honor the gospel and we stand firm to our faith. That's the lesson for this week. Have a great week.